and into America to some of the most iconic mountain bike tracks in the world. We are bringing you an access all areas pass, taking you into the pits, onto the track and behind the scenes. Anything that happens here, you're going to know about it first. So welcome to day two at Nova Mesto. And today it's all about the under 23s. The men start at three o'clock and then it's the women at five taking on the full cross country Olympic distance. And we're building up this weekend to Sunday. The men and women's elite are tomorrow, 11.30 the women, three o'clock the men. But the weekend started yesterday, as of course it did. Here's what happened on Friday. The first UCI mountain bike Cross country short track World Cup of 2023 is go. Oh, oh, a crash right in the middle, in the middle of the pack. Keller moves to the front, and this could be ominous. You can see now Richards taking control of this one at the front. That's left. Keller digs deep. Steger beside her. Who's going to get it as they come to the line? And it's Laura Steger from Alessandra Keller. still together it's all still to play for and it's hard to pick a winner amongst them oh that's a crash for Halloway and look who's in second place now it's Tom Pitcock free of rest into the last corner almost Pitcock digs deep Schwartzbart digs deep Gears digs deep Tom Pitcock takes the win in the Czech Republic What a night that was. We had an amazing time here at the iconic biathlon track in Nova Mesto, which you can see is looking fairly bright and shiny today. No sign of the rain that we experienced yesterday. And we're here in a very, very busy warm-up area as the under-23s get ready to get on out there. And joining us today, who better than to chat to you about all of this? First up, we've got your friend of mine, Bart Brennan's back again. We didn't scare you off, Bart. No, uh, I'm ready for the next uh, round uh, in the 23 races today, uh, cross country on Olympic discipline on the full course uh, and it will be a lot of excitement today. It's going to be tough and your your commentary has been a real highlight for everybody so far. You've been enjoying it? Yes, it was great. Uh, the short track, uh, what we have seen so far, but uh, today it will be even better. It's going to be even better and partly because we've also got alongside us Martin Vidal. Good to have you with us. How are you doing, Martin? Yeah, I know. Thank you for having me. It's uh, such a nice race here. Um, it's nice to be here outside the race, like looking a little bit more. So you're going to be chilling with us. You're just yeah, going to be chilling, be chilling. Because, of course. Yeah, it's going to be a nice race. I think this guy are very hungry. So yeah, looking forward. You made the step up, of course, from under 23s to elite. So yeah. what, what's so different about this race today? What's different in the kind of vibe that these these races will be experiencing? I think uh, everyone can win here. So nobody is like uh, under the mirror too much. So. It's a, like a surprise box. Everyone can win here, so that's what it makes it so nice. So yeah, I don't know who's gonna win, but for sure the guys are very hungry. Nice what's one. your it's... favorite? You can tell us. Oh, my favorite? I don't know. We race a lot uh, like last year, but I think for this track, Carter Woods will Ooh. be a great contender. He's pretty smooth. He comes from Canada. Canada, a lot of woods and technical section so I think that guy is gonna be very strong and he has also a little bit of experience in his last year in 23. Nice one okay well some of our team did pick Carter Woods we'll come on to that in a sec just a quick word bar on the the course of course because we are doing Olympic distance cross country today. Yeah it means uh, a mass start all together all the riders together a four kilometers course a lot of technical climbs uh, this course here's has a lot of routes, uh, very technical terrain, but also the descents are very fast. Not that much time to recover. A lot of climbing as well here on this course. So uh, plenty of things for these riders. And who do we think of all of your contenders, but just to pick one out, will be the one who will deal with this best? The Danish guy uh, who finished third. Uh, Oliver Solvay. Oliver Solvay right. from Denmark. He showed his strength already in the beginning of this season, and uh, that's my uh, favorite for today. You feel like he's just got the strength to do this, right? And what about Riley Amos? He's another contender we've been talking about. Yeah, she's also pretty strong. I think he also is really hungry because last year 
he maybe had a bad luck at the beginning of the year, but at the end he always very strong. Uh, we raced actually at the beginning of the year in Puerto Rico, so he was pretty strong too. He's very fast. He, I think he need to keep it chill at the beginning, but if he goes on the last lap on the front, he can really go for it. So I think he's very hungry. All right. Well, great stuff because we can, in fact, now hear from Riley Amos as he's with our reporter, Josh Colson. Riley, that was a violent way to start the weekend with the short track. A great result. How does that prep you for today's cross country? Yeah, it feels really good. Uh, definitely a great result. First loser, though. And uh, I mean, it lets you know that, you know, the body is where it needs to be. You know, gets the mind clear that it's uh, you have everything you need to perform. So try and go one better today. Is it a different strategy having two start loops and then five race laps? Or is it just uh, same strategy across the board? Yeah, I mean, I don't think one or two start loops changes much. Maybe there's be a little more hesitancy to get into the single track first if there's only one. But uh, with this field, this many riders, all young, really strong guys, like it's no mercy. Like that first lap's going to be just as fast as if it was just one. So, Will it be a, a matter of uh, wearing people down or just uh, picking the right time to attack? I don't know. It's really just kind of play out what the group does. Make sure, hopefully, to make that front group early and uh, feel out where everyone's at. You know, it's the first XCO of the season. Uh, obviously, you can only go off of how well the guys are riding in the short track, but no, no, uh, no concrete plan yet. Just play it out and be patient. A bit of weather on the cards, a bit of rain throughout the day. Is there any major bike setup changes to accommodate for the slippery routes, or are you good to go? You know, I mean, I didn't ride the track today. Just looking at what I've seen, it doesn't seem like the rain affected much. Maybe a little bit slickness on the routes, but I didn't change anything versus how I would set it up for the dry. So have a great day. Thank you, you too. Riley Amos there building up to his race today in the under 23s. But there's plenty more people we want to think about. One of them, Adrian Bokis, of course, won on Thursday, right? What do you make of him? Yeah, Adrian is actually crazy fast. He's been racing on the road a lot, so he knows about tactics. He's also a very talented rider. He can really be smooth on these routes. You really need to be smooth and know how to attack. So I think he's a pretty good contender for today. Talk to me about that. Smooth. You need to be smooth. So you're talking about kind of protecting yourself on the... You need to be smooth, actually, to recover good, to attack the climbs. And that's why you need like to be with the flow. You need to recover good for attacking all the courses. So. It's very important to be smooth. Okay, be smooth. That's the mo yeah, moral that's of this more, conversation, it costs, but... It costs a lot of energy to ride on a terrain like this with all the routes. To find a good rhythm, it's really difficult. So the bike has to be in a perfect condition, but also the, the body, the, the rider, and the combination of it, that's how you ride smooth. It seems right that the smoothest man in mountain biking is telling us all about this here, Bart Branchins. Now, look, how smooth is Bjorn Riley, would you say, Bart? He's another one uh, to uh, have a look at. Uh, yeah, he's uh, a youngster as well uh, and uh, maybe in for a good win. Uh, he used to ride on a train like that. Did, did good well uh, here uh, before, so he might be in for a good race too. Fourth in the short track. Tell us a bit more about the course. You, you've been out there today, Martin. I've been out there here like in the morning. We did two laps. It's still a little bit rainy maybe, but in the morning it was completely almost dry, so it's a little bit tricky, but I think it's going to be a really fast course, and yeah, I think it's going to be fast. It's going to be fast. That's yeah. what everybody wants to hear, right? Yeah. Because so there's a little tiny bit of there's a little bit of mud, there's a little bit of mud, but not so much because the rain no, yesterday there was is not. actually no mud. Like oh, okay. the roads are a little bit uh, slippery. Slippery, but you know the riders are going so fast they clean a little bit the track now. So I think it's going to be dry and and fast. Okay, so you hope it doesn't rain. But if it rains, it's it gets very different. But Actually, now it's a uh, perfect track, yeah. This was like yesterday, wasn't it, But We spent the whole time looking at it with the dust, and then suddenly... The rain starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, the weather forecast for this afternoon, it's uh, dry, and uh, with the rain from last night, actually, the course became a little bit better and a little bit faster. 
Okay, and so of course this this is the question: is how people can deal with this changing atmosphere best, right? That's what it's a lot of it about. Because when we were talking yesterday about how Lucas Schwarzbach, for example, didn't change his tactics when the race changed, right? Yeah, how important is that? But, 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 I mean, in short track, you don't have to change the tires that quickly. The course is most of the time similar to dry or rainy conditions. Of course, the corners become a bit more slippery, but. Now the riders have been riding on this course in dry conditions and uh, they know what kind of tires, what kind of tire pressure, what kind of setup, suspension setup they need to have. And they are ready for a good race, they're ready for a full uh, speed, give everything they have. Lovely stuff. We're about to get to the race, but we just want to take one moment, Martin, to look at the predictions that the team have been making. Our predictions, I'm afraid, have not been so good so far. Apart from, did you, how did you get on yesterday? Here's the predictions we've gone for today. Uh, we, what, what have you picked up? Oh, you went, of course, for Oliver Solvoy. I'm in with Adrian Buckies. You, Your prediction now Carter is... Woods. Carter Woods. OK, so we're going to try and do better than we did yesterday, but... But short track predictions for short track, it's so difficult. But what so difficult. Said, this well, is more. This well, is this easier. Is, right. Uh, easier, I wouldn't say. But we need to. We need to get you off now to the commentary booth. So I'm sorry to cut in. I'm sorry to have to lose you, Martin. Thank you so much for the catching up. We'll have you back later. You. But for now, let's get to Rick McLaughlin for the race. A big rider with a big future ahead of him. Rectal there from KMC, B, BMC, sorry, KMC Racing Team. Mattis Guay from the KTM Factory MTV team in France. KTM here in a big presence of the Czech Republic. They mean business. Dario Lilu from Switzerland. Soif Terulian. Can't complain, says Bjorn Riley. One of the emerging stars of US cross country. An artist in his spare time, definitely worth a follow on Instagram. So boy. From Denmark, he played a key part in that short track race, got on the podium as a result. Definitely one to watch here, likes the place a lot. Mad Riley Amos then, track factory racing. then Washi winner off the short track Good luck today, buddy. certainly somebody that has set this particular corner of the Czech Republic alight he fancies maybe doing it again this evening well as there is confirmation of your first eight on the grid I am joined in the booth by the original, and some would say still the best, Bart Brenchens. Bart, another exciting season of under 23 racing ahead of us. Yeah, especially this uh, category under 23 is uh, always a very nice category to watch. The youngsters. And for team managers like yourself, uh, yeah, an interesting proposition. Yeah, that's also good that, uh, you yeah, know, that for these guys, more visibility as well. I like that. A chance to make your name on the big stage. And there's none bigger than the UCI Mountain Bike Cross Country Olympic World Cup. And here we go, business time. The tape is removed. And it's almost time for the nerves to stop. <laughs> and who is going to lead them up this first climb. 
and they are off. They are racing here in the Czech Republic. Bjorn Riley with a great start. So two stop laps and five laps riders have to do. So Bart, just explain to new viewers then the purpose of these start laps is to try and thin the herd out a bit, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, to spread out the field a little bit. And as you can see here, there over there in the first corner, the left-hander, high speed. Sasha Udima in the green kit. Riley leading. Amos going well for track factory racing out front as well. But also, yeah, they try to uh, have an exact race time in total. So that's why they do two uh, start laps plus five full laps. We are being treated to some onboard camera work as well today. A nice shot this, and you see how oh. hectic it is. From Corin Carrick Anderson. Corin Carrick Anderson from the UK, very kindly offering his services as a camera vehicle for this one. So many riders in the 23 men category. What's the key to a good first start, Luke Bart? Is it just uh, making some space for yourself, being safe? Yeah, try to be in a good position. Uh, these riders know as well. Uh, if the most of the start lap is done, uh, it has a few bottlenecks, it has a few narrow sections, uh, single tracks, and over there overtaking is impossible, so the riders have to be in a good position over there. And where they are right now, with that still the yeah the start lap, it doesn't, it's not a part of the cross country, uh, the ori original course. So uh, actually, when they're entering the first tech feed zone, uh, actually it's only tech zone over there this year. From there on, it's the original course. And here we go. We jump on board our cable cam as we head down through the first start loop. Just a reminder then, two start loops to the 23 men. And here you can see as well on the right side, actually, that's the original course in between the tape. So this is only for the start lap. The two start laps, what the riders have to do. I think one of the start loops would probably be enough for me, Bart. <laughs> I think that would probably finish me off. This course, it's, it's quite hard to ride. It's very steep climbs, technical terrain, a lot of routes everywhere. Yeah. Full suspension bikes, dropper seat posts. Yeah, a lot of technology in the bikes these days as well. And uh, without belittling anyone as well, we should be guaranteed fireworks today because the under-23 races, they can be quite punchy, can't they? These young guys, they want to make a name for they themselves. Are, they are, their lap times are, yeah, almost similar to the Man Elite, actually. Really? Yeah, it, it, we, yeah it, it, of course, it depends also the conditions. Maybe the conditions today are even a little bit better than tomorrow. It, they expect some rain for tomorrow, so then it makes the course more slippery and slower as well. But yeah, in general, uh, if the conditions are almost similar, yeah, the lap times of, of these guys, especially in the first few laps, are almost faster sometimes even than the many elite do. Yeah, plenty of firepower out so on So over course. here, where they are right now, that's the tech zone, only tech zone this year. And you can see uh, the staff members of the teams with so all the spare parts. If you need to cross country racing, the riders can get technical assistance from a member of the team staff, from the mechanics, but as a caveat to that, they can only do it in a designated tech zone. And what that means is if you get a puncture on the way into the tech zone, it's ideal you can get it fixed. If you get one on the way out of the tech zone, then you've got to go the whole lap. Then you have a ball and lost yeah. a lot of time. That's not ideal. It is not ideal, but, but it's... for this year, actually, it's this, uh, another uh, tech feed zone here at the bottom uh, around uh, the arena, into the arena just before the finish line. And over there, the riders can take uh, uh, nutrition as well. But for that, they have to take uh, a special lane. So almost like a pit lane, really, isn't it? They pull in through these little, this little step section. Lilo leading here. Uh, Oliver Solve, second place. Now you see they've got an options of, uh, they've got a couple of options at the bottom of this descent to head up the next climb. Not much between them in terms of time bar. No, sometimes they call it a B line, but actually here uh, it's it's a, they are two, just two different lines, and uh, riders they can choose uh, both lines. Will yeah. you mix that up during the race, or will you stick to one? Uh, I, I would say stick to one, but sometimes there's too much traffic in front of you in one lane, then you will cha choose the other one, just to have uh, some more space and uh, a free lane to ride. Listen to the noise back there, Bart. They love their racing here in the Czech Republic. The crowd comes out every it, time we're here. It's such a great ambience uh, all the time here uh, next to the race.
especially in the forest. It's, it's, it's great to see that. As I said earlier in the broadcast, actually, this place has won event of the year nine times, so it's uh, it's not unfamiliar with a good crowd. And, and uh, remember this point here, that that's the highest point actually from the last climb. From there on, it's uh, a long descent, uh, the ACDC uh, part of the course that's in it to the rock and roll. Actually, it's a long descent almost to the finish line. This is a little bit of a flat section just before the finish line, but there's a little bit of time to recover actually over here. I mean, these guys are not out there to have fun, but I mean, I've, I ran this earlier on uh, in the week and as a bike rider, you just want to go and ride this section. It, it is, is really it's, enjoyable, it's, isn't it's it? It's an enjoyable course to ride, definitely it is. But it costs a lot of effort as well uh, to ride on a course like this. I mean, the descents are also uh, yeah, very technical, so you have to be concentrated all the time. That's a big day and out front. Yeah, Oliver Solvay, that's the first rider. We start to see some of the rocks now come into this uh, Nuva Mesto. Uh, see the course. grandstand over there as yeah. well, with the fans filling up nicely. They'll make their way over from the start line. Oliver Solvay from Denmark, such a strong rider. Tom Skellig is the Dutch guy on the fourth place. So avoid not unlike Sam Gears, actually, the way he just stands up on the bike and quite sort of upright. Yeah, maybe for to relax. Oh, and a bit of style as well, why not? Tom Skellikas didn't do a short track last Thursday, so uh, he saved some energy. But Solvay, he finished third in the short track. Lilo, he was in the top five, I think he was. He did quite, uh, quite okay. Dario Lilo from uh, the Swiss. And really, Amos in the second place, fifth place for uh, Dario Lilo. Yes, on uh, last uh, uh, Thursday's short track. Here we go then, round this long left hander on the 120 meter long start finish straight. So, if you've watched a bit of racing in Nova Mesto before, the track uh, actually went in a different direction on the start finish straight. Famous for producing sprint finishes this place, but they've only 120 meters to launch from, which. Uh, didn't seem to stop the short track racers uh, in terms of a runway, plenty long enough for them. So another time, a start loop. Pack of four out front now. Seven minutes, 10 seconds, the first time. Yeah, the course is actually uh, it's in perfect conditions after the rain from last night. Look at them, Bart, you can see here just how easy it can be to catch a rider in front and for it all to go very wrong very, very quickly. There's a look at the conditions, bone dry out there despite the rain earlier. Yeah, and here you see uh, more in the back, uh, riders are struggling on the uh, sections like this. A lot of yeah, routes everywhere and riders, when the riders are that close together, it's almost impossible to, to have a, a good ride actually. Yeah. They, they, sometimes even with a small mistake with, with one of the riders in front of you, you have to get up the bike too. So Solvoy, Lilo, Amos, and Shellikins, your top four there in that little group out front. Yeah. Coming back, Adrian Brashi is back as well. The winner from the short track. I mentioned earlier, yes. Bart, it was, almost as if, it was almost as if he surprised himself, actually, with that short track win. He didn't look like... he told, His first words were that it might take some time to compute what he'd actually managed to pull off there. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, he, he did a couple of road races, stage races as well. Did Cape Epic uh, with uh, Christopher Sousa. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it makes him strong, actually, and uh, that's what he showed last Thursday. Christopher Souser, of course, one of the living legends of cross-country racing and uh, by no means an easy teammate to live with on an event like the Cape Epic. And Wilson from New Zealand in that leading group, too. Five different nationalities. It looks like the pack might just bring them back in here, Bart. Yeah, they're slowing down a little bit. Especially on sections like this, where it's wide and open. Carter Woods, Sasha Hudima over there. Really Amos in that group too. Bjorn, Bjorn Reilly, yeah, sorry. Again, that start lap. Different from the original lap. Tom Skellig is now leading that leading group of five. Six riders now. Adrian Brasi in that group, really Amos. Track factory racing. Amos, one of the many actual uh, young talents from America starting to come through now, Bart. They're, they're starting to machine them out now, the Americans, aren't they? That uh, 
the momentum's definitely with them in terms of young riders. It is, yeah. They have a, ah, you see, a, now a this, big group of strong riders. This is where you can get problems in cross country. If one rider gets off in front of you, you've no option but jump off yourself. And those carbon fiber cross country racing shoes aren't really the ones for running up rocky escarpments. Perfect for riding, but not for not walking. Great. Yeah, so if you're watching mountain <laughs> not bike, the best ones. Not, the, not ideal, not ideal, no, suboptimal. Um, yeah, if you're watching cross country racing for the first time, the, they're, all, they're very similar to road shoes that the riders wear, actually really stiff carbon fiber sole with cleats that allow you to clip on and off the pedals. Uh, but there's a little bit of, yeah. There's a little bit of fluke walking from side options, to side. Uh, yeah. to, uh, for, for these shoes, but the, the carbon sole definitely is very stiff. You wouldn't head out for an all-day hike in them, though, would you? That's the Not thing. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have been on bike rides that have felt like that. feet at the end. <laughs> for sure. Tom Skellikis, Dario Lilo, Borelli Amos, Nat Wilson, Solvay and Adrian Brajif from France. And that, uh, there's Luca Martel already. Will they be getting some information from the team there, Bart, as well? Oh, as oh it is, yeah, but also the riders, they see each other on the climb like that. They are not that far out, out of each other, so we're very close together, these uh, two groups, and probably they will come back together again. Yeah. But the speed is high, especially if they go into the first full lap. Riders, they have even more climbs in front of them all the time. And the, the time in between these climbs, actually, to recover, it's almost nothing. That is the big thing about this Nova yeah, Mesto Namarami track. Is that's that how it is. <laughs> the descents are good, the climbs are tough, and they keep coming at you. Yeah, there's almost no rest in between. The, here you can see that as well, how fast it is in this, in these descents, and how tricky it is as well. It definitely it keeps swinging at you as a track. There's very, very little places to recover. So different options for the riders. Sasha Udima. Sasha is actually his nickname. His official name is Alexander. So when you see it on screen, probably it's Alexander, but uh, they call him Sasha. Dario Lilo now li leading. Expert, expert climb two, they call it. They changed it from last year. Yeah, it's an absolute just punch in the ribs. This one on board with Karen Carrick Anderson, of course the son of Scottish downhill legend Crawford Carrick Anderson. So that, this part is new from the course from last year. And it's a very hard section, very steep. And if you are on top of the climb, where do you see the, the you sign of one kilometer? It goes 180 degrees and ex yeah, it just accelerates straight down. Accelerating. You can see that, that so steep there down. is no rest for the wicked here. And this section, Again, as I say, great fun to ride, but really technical. One wrong wheel here, you can see at the amount of, one of the few places actually where there is a lot of line choice, but more line choice, more possibility for disaster as well, I guess. Yeah, I've been uh, watching the training of the riders over there, and, and yeah, I saw a couple of crashes even in training, so it's definitely a, a hard section over there. Shellikens just manualing through one of those holes there, popping the bike up on its back wheel. BMX track maneuver. That small bridge, very famous in the ACDC section. The riders making their way back down towards the Visoshina Arena. Yeah, on, and on part like this, uh, drop of seat post down, suspension full open, front and rear suspension. Yeah, big group, Luca Martin here, the French champion. Carter Woods, the Canadian champion. They're pretty much back all together again, aren't they? They are. Yeah, a group of 10, even more. So interesting to watch this race. So riders are on course. They've just finished their second start lap. What they have to be careful of now is how many matches they've burnt already, how much energy they've expended to get into that position. Now this, a lot of the players are up the front, they're tight, they're compact. 
They're being smart, they're being cagey, but right now they'll get into the woods, they'll get into the technical features. Now all those short, sharp, punchy efforts are really going to compound, they're really going to come into play. Now the race begins. So they've played their first card, they've made it through the start laps, no issues, no dramas. They've got a few short seconds here over these pretty sweet little jumps. Take a breath. This is one of the only chances of the entire course that they can recover. Have a breath, reassess, start their next plan of attack. Here we go. So, let me see slow motion shots here. The riders making their way down the track. Interesting that you should say that, Bar actually went and checked out the new Cervelo full suspension bike in the pit just before this and they've actually developed a system that they like to call the link lock which they, they actually take the rear shock out of the bike and replace it actually i was wondering if it's a smart idea i mean the, these full suspensions bikes are made with a rear shock yep and the shock absorbs a lot of strength from the from the frame into the shock well this and is what i mean I... With, with, and if you put something very rigid in it. I don't know if the car one is, is strong and uh, strong enough, but probably Safelo uh, did, did the yeah. testing with that. I'm, I'm sure they did. There's definitely people cleverer than me working at Cervelo, <laughs> and they but seem to a, think it was all right. It's a clever right. idea from them how they did it. It's a super clever idea from a bike brand that most, they're, they're making their first real foray into mountain bike racing at the minute, having been, of course, a massive brand on the road with Jumbo Visma and in cyclocross, Wout van Aert. Um, yeah, they've but I think not not every bike is it's it's ready to to just replace no. that 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 solid part instead of a shock into your re rear shock. Well, they've milled it out of alloy. Apparently, the idea came from uh, oh Carter Woods has been down in the gravel in wow. the kitty litter, and that's uh, that first uh, corner actually after the drops. That's, we that's have seen that corner in uh, short track as well. That's where we saw Zoe Cuthbert absolutely yep. detonate herself during the short track yep, race. She had a very hard crash, uh, crash over there. Yeah, a crash so big it could still be going on now, actually. Um, yeah, no, they reckon that uh, the alloy one they've got in there, they took the idea from the, uh, the plastic packaging that comes with uh, full suspension frames before you put the shock in them. <laughs> and they made one out of alloy, it worked, it weighs the same as a shock, and now for the next race they're talking about milling one out of titanium, so... Yeah, uh, even you can replace it maybe with, uh, with carbon. Yeah. yeah, why not? But they've tried it and they reckon it's not, uh, it's not transmitting stress into the bearings of the full suspension design, so... Yeah. Interesting that uh, we haven't but seen it before, but we jump on board now with the FPV drone down through the woods. And there's the big Dan at the front, churning away. Oh, and who's this off, Bart? Yeah, it's uh, Alpacine Rider. I think it's... Uh, I forgot his name, sorry for that. And here the first time in the rock and roll downhill. A very technical part very of technical this descent. course. Cross-country bikes, they run extremely low tyre pressures. And whilst that's great for rolling resistance and energy, energy uh, retention, it's not great whenever you come into a load of big spiky rocks at high speed. Riley Amos out the front of this one still for Trek Factory Racing. Trek really have built a roster of stars across all the mountain biking formats for this season. Big names left, right and center. You can see that super caliber bike. It's got the, uh, the shock, I guess the suspension, you'd almost call it, built into the top tube with uh, what's called a flex stay. So no pivot at the rear end of the bike, just carbon fiber that flexes. And yeah, the Alpecin rider must be Jan de Michiels. Must be. That was on the tip of my tongue as well, yeah. <laughs> Here we see the really, really steep climb. The leading group. A big group. It's a big group and on it's a, a big climb. like this. Making short work of it at the front. Really Amos. Yeah, really Amos showing his strength. Yeah, that's and, and this climb actually is so hard to ride. It's so hard, and with a bit of water on it, I remember trying to do it one year, and the back wheel just wants to spin up on you at every possible... But also these routes, they are disturbing, actually, your rhythm. Riders, they have to be what uh, Martin Vidal said in the pre-show as well, they have to be smooth on a course like this. 
So actually, yeah, it, it, it's, it's so bumpy. It disturbs your rhythm all the time. Martin Vidor, I think you could probably best describe him as the Archbishop of Smooth, actually. He's a fantastic rider to watch. Really enjoyed watching him during the short track. Rides like a downhiller. He won the, the Cross Country in the 23 race here what? last year. He won every round last year, He won year, every round, he? except Andorra. Yeah, except Andorra. And except, and except Worlds. Let's not mention that to him. It's quite big. Don't forget. Yeah. And here we see that rock and roll, the famous right, yeah. rock oh, and you garden. can just see those rocks will take no prisoners right here also still time for plenty of style great to see but it's just yep how far the sport is not saying that you weren't a stylish rider in your day Bart, but it's a different sport now isn't it the speed and the technical ability of these riders yeah different bikes as well i mean 29 yeah, the bikes, all the bikes. over the place we, uh, most of my career was with 26 inch wheels yeah <laughs> No 26-inch wheel bikes out there today. All 29ers just gapping through there. And all uh, full suspension bikes, uh, drop of seat coach where we have been talking about uh, before as well. And also wide of tires you see these days as well. Yeah. 2.4 is almost common. 2.4 is common, yeah. And as I said, and they run the inserts as well that we have to yeah. talk about. So uh, to protect uh, snake bites. Yeah, the inserts for these tires are kind of a bit in the best way to describe them is like a pool noodle, like a foam noodle you'd use in a yeah. swimming pool. And it is. You can get them inside the tires and it just prevents them from being burped or from losing air. But yeah, the cross country bikes now so aggressive, so much fun to ride. And the yeah. speeds have gone up and up as a result. One of those last shots there, you saw a really good demonstration of just how many line choices were open to these riders. Some gapping, jumping from one route to another, others manualing through, and others just putting both wheels into it, letting the bike soak up the damage. Dario Lilo leading. Really Amos behind him from the USA. And then Solvoy from the Denmark. Tom Skellig is on fourth place. The mechanics there Wilson. Hoping, hoping for a quiet afternoon. See it again. Bjorn Riley. Bjorn Riley. As I say, an artist in his spare time. Worth following him on social media for some of his uh, artwork. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Coming back together, that leading group. So Bart, will these riders, will they have things like gels and bars and stuff in their pockets? Is there any place you can actually get to that in Nova Meso Namarave? It's such a rough course. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of time uh, around to the arena on the asphalt, so the start finish straight. Uh, but what I saw actually now, uh, just before the start, some of the riders, they put their uh, gels on their bike. And that's because probably normally they take it in the tech feed zone. But it costs a little bit of time if you're entering the feed zone at the okay. bottom, that second feed zone just before the finish line, to take a gel. So what they did, or they take it with them into uh, their pocket in the back of the jersey, or they, they, they taped it on the top tube of the bar of the of the bike. Lilo off and running here. Yeah, he made a small mistake, and uh, it's, it's really hard to get on your bike again and, and, and keep on riding again. So you see also these small mistakes, they will count at the end. It's just cost a lot of bit. effort again, and here you see, it. yeah, yeah. Oh, he's actually off. Yeah, yeah. Just but that's because of the roots, slippery roots. Yeah, nice. See, I wouldn't count that as a crash part because he never let go of the bike. My ones, I always let go of the bike. <laughs> it's not <laughs> a real crash. To it. <laughs> I think he, he, his front wheel slides away, and yeah, that, that, that's just slipped away from him, didn't it? Yep. And you can see what we mean here. Just round that tree, and then you're straight into a technical descent. Yep. Only for Solve. Solve just a little bit of a gap now after that crash from Lilo. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice line. And you will see at the bottom the gap is even bigger. So uh, if you're you now a little bit of a gap for him at too close. If you are tuning in later in the season for uh, some World Cup downhill racing, line choice, a key, key part of downhill especially. But mountain biking is a hole where you try and draw the, straight, the, the straightest or possibly the fastest line between the obstacles, between the trees, between the routes. Downhill, Enduro, and the gravity disciplines, definitely somewhere where that art is practiced to the best. But the cross-country racers, as speeds have gone up as well, something that's become vitally important for them. And these bridges are built for the spectators to get over the course. Capacity crowd expected tomorrow, of course, for the elite level cross-country Olympic World Cup races. 
Oliver Solvey from, from Denmark. Really, Amos behind him, and then we have a small gap. Yeah, they're just. I wonder if they'll start to work together a wee bit here, Bart. They might be. There is Dar Dario Lilo. He made that little mistake, but it cost him a little bit of time. And if your strategy is now to take a gel or to take a bottle for Dario Lilo, it's, it's impossible. You have to close that gap first. You see that the leaders are both through the tech feed zone. And now you have a group of four chasing. Chasing hard to close that gap. Ah, these two. There's a gel going in for the Taking the, the opportunity for a gel, like you said. They can't get to it, though. They have to. They have to take the energy to them. We'll be in that then, Bart. Sorry, caffeine, fast carbohydrate. Car the, fast carbohydrate, yeah, sorry. Actually, gels can have with or without caffeine. Um, and especially when it comes down more to the last few laps, they will have a few gels with mm. caffeine too. But it's actually fast sugars. You can call it like that. And they will take maybe two or three during the race and probably even one just before the race. But also they have to drink um, yeah, their electrolytes or their energy drink. And that's mostly in the bottles. And I take it that will be like pre-planned before the yeah, race. It's, it, yeah, it's a real race plan, what they have, what they have in mind, what they discuss with the coaches, with the messages. And uh, most of the time the bottles are numbered as well. They will take it in, in the second or the fourth uh, round lap. So that's, that's definitely a, yeah, a strategy what they make before the race. It's a fascinating sport in terms of hydration and nutrition. They, yeah. they work out exactly how much uh, how much liquid they will need throughout a race, and the bottles are then measured yeah, the, the, out yeah, scientifically. Measure, <laughs> I mean, the bottles are not completely full. They're made most of the time just uh, 200 millimeters of yeah. drink in it, not more than that. It's all weight, what they add to the bike, but they don't like to, uh, to have. It's all weight, cross-country racing. Blackmore, the number 23 on his bike, he's in that group too. Now, Blackmore, a GB Academy rider, has some good results lately at podium in Germany in the XCO a few weeks ago. Strong Second behind Cam Mason in the cyclocross. He beat him at Margan Park, actually, as well. So, I mean, if you're beating the likes of uh, Cam Mason, you definitely know how to pedal. Peter Blackmore, have a look at him. Really Amos track factory racing team. Amos looks in good shape this season, Barde. Yep. Really strong. Dario Lilo behind him. You can see just that carpet of roots. Now these bikes, they do, a lot of them will have a, a lever on the handlebar that will allow the racers to toggle through different suspension settings, different levels of lockout, to tackle things like that, to make climbing that little bit more efficient. And that's something that we've really seen go from being a couple of brands, Bart, to most brands offering that now. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, the level on their handlebar, it, it is like a trail mode or like a full open mode. But also on paths like this, they are all full open or like in the trail mode, so that there's still a little bit of suspension, but definitely it's not completely locked. Zoe Cuthbert actually, one of the things she pinned that crash on in the short track was the fact that she was uh, so busy getting the whole shot, getting off the line first, that she forgot to unlock her suspension <laughs> in the lap first corner, which I think is completely understandable given the speed she was doing. Yeah, I saw the footage of that crash, but it was actually amazing that she didn't hurt herself that bad because she it was, was up, awful. She was up before the last rider had passed her as well. Four. Yeah. Here we go in through the rocks. Look at Riley Amos charging through there. So, so fast over there. Just a little drop off the last one as well, just takes all the rocks out of the equation. Skellig is on fifth place. It's a different skill set as well. If you do have an enduro bike at home or a downhill bike and the handlebars are that bit taller, on these cross-country bikes, they have the handlebars so low now, Bart. Little things like that, picking them up off the ground, tricky. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a combination uh, of suspension, but also weight of the bike, uh, aerodynamic car is, is important, actually, uh, too. Maybe not that much in mountain biking, but, but still, compared to... Uh, to uh, an enduro bike where you only ride yeah. down uh, most of the time. Uh, here in cross country, yeah, you, you need to, to, to go also on the fast on the steep climbs. Yeah, they are all about attack these cross country bikes, the seat angle, the head angle, everything's pushed forward to get you transferring power into the ground as well as you can as we jump on board. 
with and Karin Carrick Anderson. This is the vision of uh, every rider. What they see. Through the trees there, nice little yeah, line. A new line. He's given these lines away by putting that camera on his bike. <laughs> a group of three now, a small gap. Dario Lilo, really Amos, Oliver Solvay from Denmark in the third place. And then we have a group of four, five fighting to close that gap. There we go, Wilson in fourth. Sudima, fifth, Chelikins in sixth, Blackmore, seventh. This is Luca Martel, the French champion. Boishy, you see there, the winner of the short yeah, track. Yeah, he dropped back a little bit. You can see the Canadian jersey of Carter Woods down the base of the climb now as well. Lost some time in that crash. Yeah, that crash definitely cost him a little bit of time and also maybe he hurt himself. It's never a good sign if you have a crash it always costs some energy you can see just how soft the tires are there actually this this uh if you're talking about psi i would say fif between 15 and 20 as low as that yeah 1.1 1 .1, uh 1.4 we're gonna see this little gap here in the rear a little bit more pressure compared to the front tire and is that just to make sure that the power goes into it and you get up the hill? Yeah. Yeah. So super low pressures. And that's why they have an insert uh, into, at least in the rear wheel, rear tire. There's that little gap as well under the backside of that route. Yeah, so cross country racing really, they don't really tend to touch, uh, I was asked a couple of the mechanics earlier this week and they were explaining that they don't really tend to touch suspension pressures that much it tends to be tire pressure depending if it's raining or if it's dry that's what they'll go up and down with and it would need to be an extremely wet muddy race for them to go to a full mud tire because the drag of those taller side the, the, the knobs in the tire the added drag isn't worth the loss in performance that's how it is yeah 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 and, and also here in the uh, Novemaster Namrava, actually the course stays quite good even if there's a little bit of rain. Of course, the, the, the roots get more slippery, but not most of the time not that, that muddy, even if there's a little bit of rain. Now we had some rain last night and this morning the, the course was a little bit slippery, the roots were slippery, but still there was almost no mud on the, on the bikes, on the jerseys. It is an incredibly resilient... Uh place Nuhamesto and Amaravi in terms of how it's affected by moisture. I've covered a couple of mud races here in my time, but it really takes a lot of rain to get a muddy race, doesn't it? It's so dry in those woods. But I remember a couple of years ago, we had some muddy, uh, we had a muddy race here in yeah. uh, Nuhamesto. There we go, you can see how dry it is through the woods. So, chain ring wise, most of the riders going for around about a 36 tooth. Chain ring, I think for short tracks, some might go up to a 38. 40. <laughs> 40. 40 we saw. 40. 40 we saw. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, these days, uh, Schrem came up with a new drivetrain system. So uh, 52. Uh, 52 on the rear. In the rear. Yeah. So uh, I think even like Nina Schurter uh, tomorrow, probably with a 38 chain ring. 38 chain ring. That's what I think. If I had a 38 on my bike, you'd think I was going for some kind of land speed record attempt, but we see down into these double track there in the bottom, A and B lines. As Bart says, not really that much to uh, pick between them in terms of time on the climb. There is Blackmore. Yeah, good ride for him. You can see him just popping the seat up. That Cannondale, lovely looking bike. The Dario Lilo is pushing hard together with Rayleigh Amos just behind him. Oliver Solvay, that different line. And now coming together again, and from here actually it's about 75 meters more climbing compared to the course from last year, but very, very steep. They have they have added some climb into the back end of this course, haven't they? They've sort of made it punchier again. It, it got further and further down for a number of years, but yeah, now but now they brought it back. Yeah, better for the climbers. There is our drone. Bart's controlling that with his phone beside me here. <laughs> Hopefully I don't uh, crash into the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Not the trees I'm worried about. And here they go back down this descent. Yeah, and a lot of things to do for these guys if they turn, actually, uh, to make that turn from the steep climb to the steep descent. 
unlock the suspension, shifting, drop a seat post down, everything on the same time. I remember talking to uh, Matthias Flukiger actually whenever um, they kind of they brought that uh, suspension lockout really became prevalent in cross country, and I said, "How many times a lap are you using it? Not that much." And he went. Well, I thought not that much either, but we actually mounted a camera to the handlebar, and I was using it between 30 and 40 times a lap, which yeah, is a yeah. lot, isn't it? But also these days, most of the teams, they go on the course with the telemetry, so it measures the whole suspension setup for the bikes. And I spoke with our mechanic, he said, uh, the suspension is working 34,000 times at each lap. 34,000 really? times. I, I'm glad you didn't ask me to guess that. I would have got nowhere <laughs> near it, but that is remarkable. Like, it just goes to show, Bart, the level of mountain bike racing is that now. Suspension it's, telemetry has come into it. and Yeah, it's, I know it's for, like Formula One these days. I know from the downhill pre-season uh, testing event that we had uh, in Lourdes earlier on this year, the amount of telemetry and uh, data acquisition that was going on there with the top teams, you're, you're heading towards MotoGP level. Three laps to go. The riders are now into the meat of the race. This is the crucial part. After these fun little jumps here, as fun as they are, this next corner into the finish area is quite slippery, rather treacherous. When your concentration goes, you're a little bit tired. This can cause havoc. Now, there is a quite a defined line through the middle of the track, but just inches outside of that line is loose, slippery rubble. And right here at this point in the race, if you slap the dirt here, it's over. It's hard to come back from this. The adrenaline's high, everything's pumping. It's in a physical part of the race. So this is the real key part. You'll see riders attack now. You'll see riders explode. We're going to see some fireworks here. Eager to see it. So here they are at the base of this climb then. Bart, is cross-country racing, is it similar to road racing uh, for viewers who are maybe tuning in for the first time? Will these riders work together to try and gap away from the rest of them, or is it every man for himself? They will work together a little bit. Of course, uh, tactics definitely are involved uh, in uh, mountain biking too. But it's, it's different from the road. You see not that many team members together. Here are uh, three different riders, three different teams. But at least they will try and work together as well. They know if we can stay away of the chasing group of four. That's two riders to beat, not yeah. five riders to beat. Yeah, yeah no, and maybe there's a very fast sprinter in the chasing group. Uh, riders, they know from each other better than we do. But uh, definitely they will, uh, they will help each other and try to do that you are at least one of them on the podium. We sat down and interviewed uh, Nino Scherr earlier in the week, an interview that you can see more of in tomorrow's coverage of the Elite Race. And he said that's one of the big benefits of his um, his experience in the uh, the elite class is that he knows all these racers. He knows what their strengths are. He can sit in the pack. He looks around him. He knows who he's racing, and that's that comes and, with time. And if you have a strong weapon for, like, a sample, a sprint finish, for yeah. that, then you always can use it at the end. Huh? So you don't have to be that nervous to get away, or you have to to, to attack. So you can save a little bit of energy for uh, for a sprint. Bart, we should just say as well, a big happy birthday to Nino Scherter. Yes, his birthday. 37. Today. 37. Congratulations, Nino. Congratulations, Nino. Now you gave me a bit of information about this earlier on. What age were you when you won bronze? In I Athens? was 36 years old. 36 I turned years old. 37 in uh, the end of the year. And Ned Overend is he still the oldest to have won a he's, World Cup? He's the oldest World Cup winner. Right. On an age of 38 and a bit. 38 and a bit. Right. You're saying that my time has passed now. Then I'm unlikely to win one now at 38. It's still time for that. <laughs> I don't know. It would have to be a pretty big a few months for me to win one but anyway let's get back to it 15 seconds the gap as we watch the back of the pack coming down through that step section really good fun to ride this as well uh oh just oh, goes almost right ah, we are tire off we rear tire off there he's done well to get that stopped actually Pwah. yeah but from there it's a long way to the tech zone and he's doing the whole uh, acdc descent to the tech zone. That's yeah. a long way. He will lost a lot of time with that. And you could see there was no noodle inside. There was no pull noodle in there. No, there was no uh, insert. Insert. Noodle. Yeah, how you call it? <laughs> <laughs> we call it noodle. Yeah, we call it noodle. Yeah. 
Nice bit of style from Blackmore. There's a crowd. They've all got camera phones. You've got to throw a bit on, haven't you? They're having fun on their bikes. I love the paint job on Adrian that Trinity Racing Brushy, Specialized. I would say this bike. Yeah, it looks fantastic. The Trinity Racing. You can racing see the team. drivetrain as well. New drivetrain over there. Yep. Stylish. It's a great looking bike, isn't it? Trinity always uh, go yeah. the extra extra mile with their kits and liveries. Trinity team. And back together again. Back the, together again. The top three with the chasing group of four. On lap five now of seven. Alexander Houdima who's closing that gap. Lelou looking strong at the front of this one, Bart. Yeah, he's pushing a lot of effort into the race. A little selfie close to him on his wheel. It must be a recording uh, shot that we saw when the chasing group was closing that gap because now... Well, maybe they have just gone a wee bit. And now there's a little bit of a gap. Tom Skellikas leading the chasing group. Sasha Udima behind him. Wilson, Blackmore. Luca Martin and there, Reilly Amos. He has a, yeah. he has a, Reilly a Amos. It he's must be a technical, I guess, a flat tire. It must be happening that rocky descent, the rock Must garden, be. as they call it here. Yeah, these riders, they're going so fast in the descent. Yeah, it's sometimes quite dangerous. Dangerous for the material, for the for the tires, for the bikes. Tom Skalikas with Sasha Udima. Blackmore with the number two on his number on his back. Here we ah, see yeah. it. The burp tire, I would say, in that corner. Yeah, maybe, maybe just still enough. Good. Sometimes you can just, when we see bur when we see burp a tire, you just make it leave the rim slightly when it just releases a bit of air, and it can just go flat. And as I yeah, said, they, there's coming so much force actually on these tires in these berms. The way how they are riding, it's more like it's similar to downhill, so they have to run more higher tire pressure yeah. to avoid these things. So just two liters what left. What a shame for Riley. Riley Amos. Amos, yeah, it's shame for him. I did think we hadn't seen him for a while. I thought maybe he was just sitting back in that group behind him, but... He'll be in free fall now. And he will have he lost so much time. Skalikas, Tom Skalikas on third place now. Sasha Houdima, and then fourth. There were, then there were two out the front. Yep. That's how it goes in mountain biking sometimes. We've seen Lillo off the bike on one of the climbs, Bart, but oh, oh there he is. Again. Yeah, yeah. The, the tire came off. You can see the white liquid inside the tire. There's a, it's a silicon sealant to plug any puncture holes, but it doesn't help hold the rim on. Really, Amos, he has to run that whole hard climb in the middle of this race. Yeah, the Trek, fac course. Trek Factory Racing Squad on Pirelli this season as well, across the board in downhill and cross country and enduro. This is the tech zone where really Amos has to be to change his rear wheel. It's not that far anymore for him, but still. Yeah, it'll feel pretty far. We saw yeah. we saw Nino Scherter with one of the comeback rides of all comeback rides here last it's time, I Bart. Yeah. Similar I problem. Remember. And he rejoined the front of the race, but uh, he did one of his best races actually. It was one of the best performances I've seen from him. Performances, yes, that's the word. Yeah, I think um, I think it made him angry. I, yeah. think, I, think, I think that's Sometimes where it, it came from. Your, it gives you the, energy, the adrenaline, yeah. what you need to have. Oliver Solve from Denmark with Dario Lillo. Lillo's good through the descent part. Yeah, different lines for both. Dario Lillo, he made that mistake in that inside uh, line in the previous lap, so. Now the outside line for him. It's a hell it's a healthy gap back to Shellikens now, isn't it? I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing the next time split. And 
Blackmore. Wilson on the fifth place. Here are the leaders then. 44 minutes into it on lap five. What do you, what are you looking for, Bart? If you're racing somebody that closely for that long, it's just the two of you. Are you looking for signs of weakness, little line choices not going well? Yeah, you, you don't know uh, if, if one of them is uh, very strong in a sprint finish. Maybe they are looking yeah. for that. Uh, but of course, also, they have to find out and testing each other on the climbs, on the different parts of the course, maybe in the descents. Uh, they, they have to try and put pressure on each other. And we see now as well, now it's uh, Solvay again, who is leading with a small cap. So definitely they will uh, testing each other and try to get away well, last instead night's... of uh, sprinting against each other. Last night's winner in the short track, Tom Pidcock, did say after the race that he always knew that it was going to be a question of who led on to the start finish, tr uh, the start finish straight first made that move early on, got into the last turn first, and then just let the blue touch paper, but... But I think in some case, he was actually convinced if he should have been in uh, in Pitcock's wheel in the last corner, he could have beat him. That's what he said yeah. in his interview, so yeah. it's not the same for everyone. It's not the same for everyone, and granted, one of those people is Tom Pitcock, which kind of, if you've got his levels of talent, I kind of think a win is always on. If you haven't seen the short track from yesterday evening go and check out just what a performance tom pitcock put on yeah, stone yeah, last yeah, yeah. across the start finish line after lap one and just quietly picked them off no, st the win. no stress at all Absolutely no stress. first few laps for him <laughs> said in his interview he'd been out for a three and a half hour training ride beforehand i heard they, uh, he had a call from his coach that he was in uh, the short track so he had to turn around to get back to the hotel and to change himself and prepare for the short track in the evening Absolute animal of a rider, Tom Pidcock. Really just in fine And, and here fine we see form. Oliver Solvay taking uh, that uh, feed zone lane. Yeah, let's see how much it's cost. That's the only lane where you can take your bottles, your gels, and he took a gel and probably also a bottle. It's a couple of bike lengths there, Bart. Yeah, yeah, it goes a little bit of time. And now you see Dario Lee Lewis uh, keep on pushing, why not? There we go. The strategies. Lap six then begins. On the penultimate lap. A little bit of a gap. A few seconds. Another problem. For Oliver Solvay. Oliver Solvay. Just taking over the big diesel engine at the minute. He had a good uh, earlier season. Here is that time gap. Oliver Solvay. Let's see what the league currently stands at then. 27 seconds back to the Ukrainian. Hudima, Shalikins yep. in fourth. Sasha Hudima riding for the KMC mountain bike racing team. Ah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's rolled off the tip of the tongue there. Bart, Bart Brench is, of course, uh, the team manager of that particular team. But So I'm proud to see him uh, doing so well today. What's his strengths as a rider, Bart? Where does he He's really shine? He's still very young, uh, European champion, junior, uh, two years ago. He, had, he didn't have his best season last year. He was struggling with some breathing problems. And uh, as a team, we tried to find out what it was, but it wasn't not that easy to find out. Uh, of course, the war, it starts last year. Uh, it was February, March last yeah. year uh, as well. So we, uh, we were talk thinking about some um, uh, mental problems as well. But luckily, he found his energy back uh, in the, uh, the off season. And um, he already did a, a good start of the season. And yeah, he's, in, uh, he's a very talented rider and uh, luckily, yeah, he showed it uh, today again. Going very, very well. Of course, Ukraine's produced some absolutely stellar cross-country riders in the past. But you see this right now, after the the change of the lanes from the tech feed zone, the feed zone actually, against that fast lane that Yulilo took, the gap is still there, these few seconds. Yeah, he can't seem to pull it back in, can he? So <laughs> he took the opportunity to get away, and it seems to be that it's working so far. Dario Lille from Switzerland. Steep climb over here. There's a little bit of time to recover. And 
After that, actually, there's that expert this, climb. One. That little expert climb is really tricky. I it's remember having really to tricky. It. And here it is. Uh, luckily, it's dry now, so... Uh, it's dry, but these rocks in the middle, where Lilo is just to the left of him, they're so shiny and slick from all yeah, the years. Just so. with a little bit of rain, actually, uh, we were riding this morning, and we, we tried to get uh, up over there, too, but it was almost impossible to, to yeah. make it. So they're chasing group of four. With Tom Skellig is in it, Sasha Hudima in it, Matthew Wilson and Blackmore, Peter Blackmore. And that gap is still there, entering the rock and roll. Here we go, you see the speed they're traveling at through these rocks off that last step. Flying over these rocks. Lilo's not looking back here, Bart, you know. Oh, he's pushing hard, there, you Lilo. A very flowy section, this, where we is right now. High speed cornering. On that Scott Spark RC bike. As designed, developed, tested. One on pretty much everything by Nino Scherter over the years. Dario, this is Dario Lilo. Pushing hard, try to get away. And and now into that flowy rock climb section yeah. in front of him. The flowy rock section leads you on to the bottom of that climb. The gap is not that big, especially not here on a climb like this. Low speed now on the, this part of the course. Riders are try to avoid every route, try to find a smooth line. Like it is no. No smooth line. No smooth lines climb. up here. An absolute <laughs> carpet of roots lining this climb. Has Lilo gone for the fingerless gloves, Bart? You never really see them as much these days, the mitts. No, it's... It's a throwback to your day, that. Well, he uh, yeah, had also some... Uh, yeah, my, actually, here, uh, Tom Skellicus, he's without gloves. Actually, when I was young, I, I couldn't ride with gloves. Either. Really? No, no, I was without gloves. Yeah. <laughs> now I can't. <laughs> I can't ride without anymore. <laughs> now it's better to have uh, long finger gloves these days. Yeah, and they make your so hands more grip. But also, if you have a crash, it, it protects your your hands as well, which is really important. They make them so lightweight now. All the these days are so yeah, lightweight. Yeah. Even in summertime, it, I don't bother at all to wear long finger gloves. Luca Martin there. Oh, but yeah. Factory team, new team this year. Yeah, great one is if you're of uh, fairer complexion, like myself, you put the sun cream on before the ride, you don't put gloves on, your hands start to get sweaty, then they're covered in oil, then your grips are covered in oil, then it's an absolute disaster waiting to happen. But the What Dane, happened now? He has got past him. Yeah, how did he do it? He Where must, did he do it? We didn't see it happen off screen. The Danish, Oliver. I kind of still think that Solvoy looks like he's ticking over here, Bart. He doesn't... He must have had a big push to get past Lillo, unless Lillo's had a problem somewhere. That might be see. possible, too, because he's... Looks like he's uh, riding away from him. He might have a, a little bit of a Wonder problem. If there's a slow Dario puncture Lillo. or something. Yeah, that might be, that might be possible. Yeah. But soon he will enter the tech zone. Well, we'll, see. Lilo. we'll see if he does pull over in the yeah, tech yes, zone. Yes, you're right. Rear wheel. Rear wheel is soft. You see it's sliding. It's oh, sliding that all the is time. Such a shame. He has an insert in it and he can still ride. Yeah, there's a difference with the inserts. What's not? No, maybe not. Looks Let's like. have a look. Looks like that. Well, we just peeled away from that. Let's see if he, he pulls will, he will in. We'll know soon. Oliver Solve straight through there, no looking back. Leading the race now. No. No. It's a quick glance over the shoulder from Solvoy there as well. 39 seconds back to the Ukrainian. Sasha Udima with Tom Skalikis. Matthew Wilson on fifth place. Alexander Hudima, his official name.
Right, where is Lillo? There He's he is. still there. I wonder if he just yeah. had a little moment off camera, Bart, maybe somewhere, and just lost the wheel. We did see it earlier on the race. He did lose the front end, slid out. I said it wasn't a crash because he never let go of the bike, so we'll see. He's certainly going down there fast enough. These guys are pushing really hard. They are, aren't they? This is it now, starting to wind up. Popo, it's the same line here at the bottom. Yep. Yeah, it is, it's hard to say actually which line is faster. From Skellicus with Sasha Udima now, closely together. They're uh, a second group of two then, gunning it out for the last spot on the podium. Yeah, also this group is stretching out. Yeah, last spot on the podium. Yeah. Two, a top three. Top five in the elite category. Luca Martin, a little bit further down, but not that far off. No, the reigning French national champion, as you can see from the French jersey. The trickle there. And now a little bit time for Oliver Silva to relax. To relax in this descent. Nice line. The speed, you can see. Right, Bart, we did see some incredible scenes on Eurosport yesterday with uh, Alberto Contador going wild in the commentary booth and his rider won a stage in the Giro. Are we going to see the same again if uh, Sasha gets on the podium? Oh, I could go crazy and start throwing place. the computer around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> Absolutely perfect conditions in the woods here in the Viso Take a little bit more, and we, uh, this happened to a do A little that. bit more, it's going to take a bit of spot. <laughs> Number one spot for that to happen for Bart to really... But the podium would be really nice. To really let loose. Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. the new course. Yeah, well, it does a really nice, a good race. I mean, first cross-country Olympic for these men under 23 this year. First World Cup. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they show their strength. They show their form. And uh, he's in a great shape. Is this a big one to settle the nerves, Bart, as well? You've got that long off-season of prep and of training and all the rides, all the it is. hours it is. on the road to get they, here. They have done some races, but never a race where they have been all together. Yeah. And Martin Vidal already said it as well in the pre-show. Uh, yeah, who's your favourite? And he said, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say. They all get in the race, and that's actually how it is. We certainly saw on the short track uh, yesterday evening that it felt like anyone in the top ten of either race had yeah, especially, I think especially short track racing is even more difficult to uh, predict. But cross country, yeah, Oliver Silva, we know that he did uh, quite well in the earlier season. Well, the Dane has decided that he doesn't need any more gels, he doesn't need <laughs> any more liquids. It's time to get on with the job in hand here. Yeah. Just dropping down into a slightly more efficient aero Last position. Lap. Last lap. Whatever you have left in the tank, it's time to use it. You need to bring her back on fumes in this one. Oh. Lilo. They're giving everything they have. Just a few seconds in between. Last lap for these two. Oliver Solve and Dario Lilo from Switzerland. Yep. Nothing Solvay in between these two. Got past Lilo somewhere halfway around the last lap. Having uh, really struggled to bridge the gap to him. He's managed to get by him just off camera. And now up this climb. Actually, these guys are on the same bike. Scott, yep. both Scott Spark RCs. Is he able to close that gap? It looks like that with this shot. It does look like he's coming back to him a little bit. Of course, it can be a bit deceiving, the concertina effect, but... And what happened behind them? This is it. I think these two are going to come back together now, Bart. Yeah, but the gap is still there. Not waiting at all. Coming together. Dario Lilo. Don't forget to Oliver stay. Silve. Don't forget to stay right here for the under 23 women's race. Coming directly after this one. At five o'clock. They start. And that will be fireworks as well. But for now, we are concentrating on the men. And these two really have been the class of the field. They've been out front for the whole thing. They did a good race, both in short track last Thursday and now again in cross-country Olympic. 
the longer version, the longer discipline. Schellekes with Sasha Houdima and Matthew Wilson. The numbers three, four and five in the race, chasing hard. Last lap for them too. There's a Dean and a Swiss out front. Five different nationalities in the top five. Another chasing group is passing by. Yeah, it's still passing by the booth now. Just clocked Adrian Boishy well back down the order now. He's just come past on the final lap as we speak. Gives you an idea of how hard these two have pushed out front. Shimano expert climb one. So I look in no strong up there, Mark. For them. But it's very hard to make it here. No problems. But the gap is still there. Carefully in the descent, I would yeah. say, especially in the last lap. Oliver just having a look over the shoulder there. Where is he? Not that far off. Oh, he's suffering too. So yep. they. You can see it. Fascinating, Bart, how some racers can conceal that. Pauline Ferran Bravo, you never know how, how hard she's working <laughs> yeah. face wise. She's just inscrutable. <laughs> and poker facing. Poker facing. And you saw the likes of Zena Fry on the sprint last night, just giving it absolutely everything. Yeah, it's diff different uh, yeah, for, for each one. And maybe the opportunity over here to close that gap in the descent. I mean, there's just a few seconds in between these two. So I still find a bit nice. of time for a bit of style there. And then suddenly again, that big climb in front of them. And then it's all over and it's straight back up the hill. <laughs> Even if you have the idea to give it all, to sprint up that mountain, your legs are sore, pain, pain in the body. They have to, last lap it is. Under the bridge. Is there anything you can do to train for the race pace though, Bart, for this kind of intensity of effort? There's nothing that replicates it, is there? No, there's nothing, it, that, that, that's how it is. Uh, but they are in the zone, they know what they do, they know why they do it. And it's a win, a win in the World Cup. And they all like to have it. Out of the saddle for the last time here on this climb. Roots everywhere. And again, Mario Lilo. He's pushing hard, but on his saddle, different style they have. Oh, look over his shoulder. He's still there. He's there. He's still there. You're hoping each time you look over the shoulder, maybe he won't be there, but. It's more like a, a long sprint, actually, this last lap. There's nothing in between these two. And again, yeah. look back over his shoulder, he's suffering. He's suffering, but he's still got the and pace actually, of mind. This climb, look. It looks like you are on the top, and it's not. It's not. And you still have to go a long while. The Shellekin. Keeps on going. Oh, Skellekin is now attacking. Sasha Dima is going with him. Skellekin is riding for the Dutch national team here in the Nomoreste Nomorave. Out of the saddle. Really sprinting to the top. But Sasha Udima is going with him. There's nothing in between these two either. Matthew Wilson's well, three amongst it too. The last spot on the podium. Yep, it's the business end of this one. Oliver Solvay, now the gap is a little bit better, uh, bigger. Solvay on his way down now. Where is Lillo? He has dropped Lillo again. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, but it's, he's not that far off. I think Solvoy has something in his pocket on that part of the course bar, because it's around now that we, yeah, we, we saw him get see. past him yeah, last time. Yeah, right with that. So that's his favourite part, probably. Here he is, yeah. second place. If Lillo wants to win this, and he's got every right to, he needs to start closing this gap now, making yeah. some real inroads on the Dean. I don't know if it's there for him to do. Two more climbs to do. This one is not the hardest, but the last one after the Cannondale BMX section. I think they're all That's pretty really hard at this stage one. of the race part. Yeah. So they still. Every little climb. And I just wonder, does that a little signal that he does have a little bit in reserve? The fact that it he's is. still mentally sharp yeah. enough to keep an eye on where he's, his rival he's is. He's carry on a lot of speed in that from that descent, and then in the first bit of the of the next climb, he's Six accelerating seconds. out of the saddle, sprinting. And then he's sitting down, pushing hard. 
six seconds the gap there's nothing in between these two it's nothing but at the same time Lillo yeah, will want, time, to, yeah. will want to close this <laughs> he'd rather that it was a lot a lot closer Gav Black there just shouting some encouragement Denmark against Switzerland how does it settle now for Dario Lillo of course Switzerland Switzerland so dominant through the ranks here in cross-country mountain bike racing but it's a Dane who leads this one women and men yep the whole shooting match at the Olympics in uh, Tokyo uh, the, the top three women all Switzerland getting on the Swiss Olympic team is almost harder than winning a gold medal these it is, days. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but one of their own is struggling a bit here Lillo needs to find some answers and he needs to find them quite quickly nice style yep Oliver Silva from Denmark jumping here when do you start thinking Bart when do you start dreaming that this might be it this might be the win can you allow yourself that luxury I or? Mean, yeah definitely he, he can but he has to be concentrated he, he has to keep on pushing but maybe when he is on the, at the top of the this one the last climb from there on actually it's it's what I said before a long yeah flowy descent and then still a little bit of a flat in the arena but not that much anymore and he showed his strength already before, so he must be able to make yeah, it. Solvoy as well, but a big, every strong mistake, sprinter. Every mistake right now, that, that will cost him a lot of time. And also still, yeah, I mean, still in that, that decent as well, the rock and roll, we have seen it before. Yeah, many dramas we have seen we here have in the last season. disasters in there. Yeah. Yeah, Everything so can happen in mountain biking. Stay where you are. Solvoy's found a second. He's still looking over his shoulder. As we saw on the short track, a more than capable sprinter as well. So he'd back himself, I'm sure, if it came down to uh, a final drag race on the 120 meter long start finish straight. But he's also quietly hoping that he could just have 120, mil 120 meters to start celebrating. Down into this dip, heads back into the woods. The last time here in this descent, ACDC. A small gap and he's relaxing still still looking yeah yeah yeah. he knows exactly how big his gap is smooth on these sections two quite long looks there maybe maybe it's just starting to dawn on oliver but he needs to get these next couple of sections right nice little jump across that little road section there the rock and roll for the last time He's generating as much speed as possible from the track now yeah. eight seconds now it goes up by a second again he's shaking his head oliver Silva, here he is coming into the arena almost telling himself to concentrate another look over his shoulder the jacket oh the jersey's getting zipped up part For the jumps safely for the last time that's a great feeling for him entering the arena on his own the work has all added up it has been enough all those hours in the gym all those hours on the road bike training by yourself Lilo sprinting already but is it going to be a lost cause he's coming close Oliver Solvoy has he judged this to absolute perfection Starts to celebrate with the crowd. Oliver Solvoy has done enough. The Dane looks over his shoulder one last time, gets up out of the saddle, turns it over one last time. Oliver Solvoy wins the first UCI mountain bike cross country Olympic under 23 race of 2023. Bart, a well won race that one. Dario Lilo, second place. And here is Tom Skellicus for the third place. Yep. Sasha Udima a little bit further off on fourth. Jalica starts to beat the bars there in celebration, but it's not done yet. It soon will be, though. A great performance for the ditch guy. Sasha Odima on fourth place. And here he comes, Jalikins. One of the big, big talents. In for third place. Just ahead of Bart's rider, the Ukrainian.
Bart, well deserved. Yeah, well deserved for Sasha for place. Really proud of him. Yeah, but the the national coach from the Netherlands. And there's Matthew Wilson over the line in fifth, the big Kiwi. Yeah, great performance. Yeah, superb performance, New actually. Zealand. Luca Martin from Luca. France. Luca Martin looks happy with that one as well. Yeah. yeah. Strong right. Peter Blackmore from the UK. Small gaps. Our very own Haley Edmonds tracking down the winner interview. Absolutely thrilling on the 23 race. That would love to see. And there is a sprint finish further back. Oh, just on clips there. The Thomas Maxson racing rider. Big smiles across the line. For Luke Viedman. Carter Woods, what could have been? Giant factory racing rider. Plenty more races to come. Well, Bart's got his running shoes on. He's heading down to the post show. Well, we did think that it would be lively. It's never a dull race here in Novo Mesto Namarave, and that one was certainly an absolute blinder. So, boy, from Lillo, from Chelikins, from Hedema, from Wilson. That's your podium. Here are confirmation of those results then. Medean takes the win. Lillo, Chalikin, Zidema, Wilson, Martin, Blackmore, Batone, Herzog, and Viedman. Carter Woods in 11th. Adrian Boishy, winner of the short track in 15th. And here is what it means. Turn up to the first UCI mountain bike cross country Olympic World Cup of the year. Cross the line with a win. Well, we've seen him crossing the line. Let's hear now from Haley Edmonds, who's with our winner. I'm joined here by the race winner, Oliver Solhoy. What a performance from you. Your first World Cup win here in Nova Mesto in the under 23s. Uh, How did it go for you? Yeah, just incredible. I can, uh, yeah, still coming to my mind. Just flat out racing all day, so uh, yeah, just a general good weekend for me, and uh, yeah, just over the moon by this one. It was a tough battle. Um, you you were you came further away from the pack, just the three of you with Dario as well and Riley. Um, when Riley did have his punch up, what did you think? Were there any kind of reflections in your mind, my, mind to maybe take it a little, a little bit slower? Yeah, just uh, we were pushing out the expert climb, but then uh, Riley. Made some mistake down the downhill, and uh, that was the point for me. Just taking a bit slower in the downhills, and uh, maybe t putting a bit pressure on the downhills just to uh, maybe make die or make a mistake. But uh, yeah, yeah, at that point, uh, it was quite scary. Yeah. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There he is then. Oliver Solvoy, and we got Bart Benchins here smiling brightly because that was his prediction. The prediction that Solvoy would manage to go ahead. Did you see him winning in such style, though, Bart? Yeah, he did a great performance. Uh, he showed his strength. Uh, I've seen a couple of races uh, from him earlier this year, and it was my prediction, but it was just an, a great race to watch in general. Uh, yeah, these guys, they went so fast. Uh, a lot of drama for a couple of riders. Really, Amos, a shame with a flat tire. Uh, yeah, uh, Sasha Houdima from uh, my team, who finished fourth, actually was part of him. Yeah. Another Dutch guy, uh, Tom Skellig, is on the third place. Uh, but the way how they were racing, uh, also Dario Lilo, and uh, 
Yeah, uh, Solvay, uh, Sol, Sol Hoy, I would have to say, uh, against these two, just a few seconds in between at the, at the finish line. It was maybe just one or two seconds left. Yeah, such an exciting race to see. It was such an exciting I race. I like it. And Dario Lillo, of course, did so, so well and pushed him. We heard their Haley talking about the gap getting extended towards the end, but they really pushed each other, didn't they? And and uh, we, saw, we saw actually in the race, and we got some footage of it, that he decided, Oliver decided to take on an energy gel just towards the end. Yes, yeah. And Lillo did it. Different strategies, uh, and they, they need to have their energy. They have to need their sugars, uh, their fast sugars, the energy. And it, it might affect uh, yeah, the result at the end. That's how it is. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to see these things too. Little details, you mean? Yeah, li yeah little details with, with, with a great uh, yeah, uh, effect at the end. Yeah, and the thing is, of course, so is that something you would... Is that something you do instinctively in the moment, Bart, or would you make a plan in advance and say, okay, my plan is going to You make a plan in advance, and yeah. it's not always that it will happen like that. But uh, I think he, uh, for Oliver Solve, he, he still had something left, and he had a, he was still good thinking, uh, and he was quite clever, and uh, it, uh, it went perfect for him. Yeah, he's, he really did look as though he had something left. There's a little bit as well in the footage, again, of when he started to pull away. And what's going through your mind in a moment like that, Bart? Yeah, it, it, when it went well, it gives you some extra strength, and uh, that's how it happened for uh, Oliver Solve. And uh, they were both suffering, actually, uh, on that uh, climb. But uh, when the gap was there, and he knows as well, with one lap to go, it's... Uh, a little bit more than the 10 minutes time he could give everything he had and these guys are well trained and uh, yeah, it was it wasn't impossible for Dario Lilo actually to close that gap anymore even when it was just a few seconds because he was broken by what had been going on for broken and, and if you have the feeling that you can win a race yeah you it gives you always something extra you could really start to see that at the end. You could really start to see that. And yeah, as you say, brilliant performance, but you get that additional bonus from knowing that you're nearly there. However, unbelievable flat out racing for what was it? You know, over an hour. This is <laughs> incredible stuff that these young men are putting their yeah. bodies through. Now, speaking of someone whose body got put through a lot, Carter Woods, who we spoke about in the build up, in fact, ended up crashing quite early doors in the race. And we can hear from him now. Carter Woods, rough way to start, but you had a great positioning prior. Tell us what happened up there. Yeah, the plan was a conservative start, um, sort of how I rode when I won here two years ago. And I was right where I wanted to be, and I just stopped thinking for two seconds and front wheel over that berm, and it was kind of, it was rough. Rough, rough place to start. How was the head? Were you able to settle back into a rhythm there? Were you angry? Were you just taking a breath and calm, as calm as can be? Yeah, there's, there's no time to... You get flustered, but pick the bike up, make sure everything looks okay. Obviously, you got so much adrenaline, you don't really feel anything. So you kind of get going, and yeah, halfway through the lap, you're like, oh, okay, it's, it's starting to hurt, it's starting to hurt. But I rode... Uh, yeah, I rode as well as I could, tried to snag some points for the overall, but it's disappointing not being able to show uh, yeah, what I'm capable of. But You had a big group there under the final lap. Did that explode? Did you have enough energy to attack up the end there, or how did that final lap go with such a big group around 10th? Yeah, uh, I've raced this track quite a bit, so just trying to... I sort of know where it tends to break apart on the last lap and where you need to go and where you can conserve. Um, so, yeah, I just waited until I saw the group was hurting, and... Just a little bit, little surge uh, tends to kick them off the wheel and then just steady to the finish. Great recovery, well done. Yeah, thank you. Carter Woods there with Josh Carlson, sounding a little bit forlorn, wasn't he, Bart? But look, here is the uh, here is the final roundup. Here are the times and the finishing places. As you say, a few good little fights, not just at the very top of the order, but down into fourth. And then also Carter Woods finishing just outside of 10th there in 11th. We really thought he was someone who could deliver something today. Yeah, but these you, things happen. you have to be concentrated all the time. And just what he said, uh, just a few seconds uh, unconcentrated, uh, and he slept away with his uh, front wheel in that uh, first uh, corner of the course. Yeah, it cost him a little bit of time, a crash, and uh, it's still a good performance. Uh, finish 11th, uh, grab some points for the overall. 
and uh, probably we will see uh, more of him uh, during the season. We certainly will. And of course, a huge, a huge field out there today. Some of the guys right down the bottom, you could see them as in the, because you can see the, the finish line just behind us. We can see them crossing there, looking absolutely exhausted. And sometimes, yeah, but it's the, the people down the bottom as well who really give us a sense of how tough this course is. This is a really hard uh, course, but it's also a hard sport. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't matter on which course they are riding, but <laughs> it, if, it, if the start is gone, they give everything they have till the finish, and that's what mountain biking is. They certainly did, and someone who in particular gave everything he had, but it just wasn't quite enough is Dario Lillo, and he's with Hayley now. So Dario second here in Nova Mesto in cross country Olympic under 23s. How would you assess your performance today? Yeah, it was good. It was a, it was a really hard race. It's always hard here in, in Nova Mesto. The track is quite physical. So uh, yeah, and we were quite a, a big group in the front at the beginning of the race. And then uh, yeah, we, we just, uh, the three guys were, were a little bit faster. We could open a gap. And yeah, there it was uh, all out sprinting till, till the end with Oliver. He was a, a bit faster than me. I had some, some problems in the last lap but uh, yeah, I think it was a, was a good performance for me today. After your fifth place yesterday in cross country uh, in the short track did that kind of give you a bit more motivation and maybe to, to kind of do better here today? Yeah, it was, was special because it was the first time that we did a, a short track race before a, a World Cup. So, like, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's new and we had to, to adapt a little bit with everything. But, uh, yeah, I did some, some mistakes in, in the short track, but I, I felt that the, the performance was already there. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, to enjoy it today and, and try and see what's, what's possible. And I, that's what I did. Thank you very much. And congratulations. Thank you. Well, it's been a good weekend, actually, for him, Tari Lillo, even if he doesn't cross the line in the... No, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, very strong in short track and a good uh, result uh, today. And also uh, a good confidence for him uh, after these two uh, great races on from Thursday and now again. So, uh, yeah, more, more from him to see uh, yeah. in the future, uh, for sure. A lot to take away. And in third as well, we wanted to speak about your, uh, your fellow Dutchman. Yeah, yeah, Tom Skellikens. Uh, I like uh, to see him on the podium, uh, even if uh, yeah, my own teammate uh, <laughs> he Sasha Udima, him. Oh, he beat him, but in a good way. And Tom had a lot of, a lot of bad luck, actually, in the beginning of the season with some uh, technical problems, but he worked really hard. I know him, for, I know him quite well. And uh, it's great to see him uh, for the first time uh, on the 23 podium. Uh, and, he, and you could see him as well when he was crossing the line, how happy he was. Big smile. And uh, yeah, it's great to see that. To finish in thirds, yeah, you know you've, you've made a brilliant achievement there. You could just have been outside of it. When you say you know him quite well then, the, the kind of training that he's been doing, is that what's impressed yeah, you? Yeah, that's what impressed me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He has been living in Spain for uh, almost all the winter. So he spent a lot of time for that, and uh, he's a very talented Dutch uh, rider. And we need these guys in the Netherlands too to uh, to lift the mountain bike sport, and uh, and he's one of them who does it. You can't do it all single-handedly, but let's hear from him now. Tom, third place here in Cross Country Olympic Nova Mesto under 23s. Uh, are you happy with your performance today? Yeah, for sure. I'm very happy. I started a bit in the in the middle of the of the pack. And then I say to the coach from what shall I do? Should I go full in the start lap and then the look if I can go to the front? And it was possible and then I was immediately in the race in the front of the race and then yeah it's so much easier. But I'm very happy to take the third place. Because of course you had uh, Alexandra snapping at your heels. I mean how hard was it to kind of to keep him off? Yeah, it was very hard. I was I did an attack on the on the root uh, root hill. And, but I can't get away and then after that one I attacked again and then I had three seconds or something and then he broke and then it was all out to the finish but I was happy to uh, to took the, uh, the third place thank you very much and well done thank you you're right he certainly was looking happy wasn't he there yeah was and also he, he didn't do a short track last Friday of the last Thursday because he wasn't in the top 40 so he, maybe he, he saved some energy what uh, most of the riders uh, spend already on Thursday so uh, yeah just a few seconds in between him and uh, Sasha Udima uh, but uh, yeah, great performance of both actually these little slivers of difference can make all the difference in a race like that as race as competitive as the one we've just seen here speaking of competitive races everybody it's time to take a little look at our uh, team predictions as a group <laughs> 
<laughs> and Bart is smiling because I'm smiling. he knows yes. that he is top of the leaderboard. In fact, he is the only person who's managed to score any correct predictions. And it was, of course, only in the race point. we just had. So you are winning with, yep. with one point one against point. everyone else's zero points. <laughs> I mean, if you can... It's hope, difficult. Hope it's so difficult, this, <laughs> the predictions, to make it well. Yeah, to predict. It, yeah, thank you. That's it, very, it's very, really, it's very really kind difficult. of you. Yeah. Um, some more people who are feeling more cheerful, perhaps, than the rest of us in our team predictions situation here are those on the podium who we can see now collecting their laurels. And it's good to see all of these guys working together as well. I mean, and smiling and being friendly, yeah. even after yeah, that big that, moment. That's what mountain biking is. That's what mountain Actually, biking is They like. all have to do it by themselves. And yeah. uh, they are contenders against each other, but also happy for each other. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, we also need to let you know that there is, of course, plenty more mountain biking to come. We've got the women's under 23s race up in a moment, but there's also Lots more sports coverage for you on Discovery Plus coming up later today. And here is Abby Stevens to tell us about it. We're in the impressive PGE now Adova Stadium, right in the heart of Warsaw for what is the biggest speedway event on the calendar. Scott Nichols joins us. Scott, what makes this so special? Oh man, there's going to be 50 odd thousand people crammed into this stadium. They're noisy, they're excited, they're going to be very vocal. The racing is fast, it's close, and it's all encapsulated in this amazing stadium. We cannot wait. Join us at 5.30 p.m. for all the build-up on your Sport 2 and Discovery+. Plus. Beautiful stuff. Well, yeah, do stick around and watch a bit of Speedway later on on Discovery+, Plus. but we're going to be staying here in this beautiful track, this biathlon. I can't